it is. I hope you have had your coffee. I hope you have had your, I don't know what you're having, maybe your drink, maybe your supper. And this is our third session. I am Pastor Connie. I am going to be looking at topic 284. As we start, let us begin with a prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come and have your way. Come and take your right place, your place, Holy Spirit. Teach us, guide us, revive us, Holy Spirit. We invite you to come and bring and reveal the secrets through the word of God. We pray and ask. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. Awesome. It's so awesome to see everyone here coming in to learn and to equip yourself with the Word of God. I want to say to you as students and anyone else who comes in to learn the Word of God, I want to say to you, I honor you for sacrificing this time. And I'm talking about Monday is crazy. The hours are late, but you are still pushing to see that you equip your word yourself with the word of God. I want to say to each one of you as students and anyone right now, as long as you are learning from the word of God, we are all students of the word of God. I want to say to you that I honor you. May God honor you for desiring and sacrificing for his word to grow in his kingdom. And I pray again, may God honor you. May God honor you for that sacrifice. Because let me tell you, before the Father, it is an honorable thing. You would have chosen anything else, but you have chosen to come here to invest and to grow in the word of God. So get let's get right into it. We are looking at Genesis chapter 3. This is one of those chapters that have been, and I'm saying again, been misinterpreted so many times. No, so many times it's one of those chapters that have been misinterpreted. And as a Bible student, as a student of the word, this chapter is a chapter you need to learn. And you need to be able to divide the word of God well and equip yourself very well. Because this is one of those chapters that have been overly and overly and again really misread and really misinterpreted. So we are going to look at the fall of man. And believe me, you and I, this is where we have to understand. When we get to look at the fall of man, I believe we get to understand the grace that we have received through Jesus Christ. We get to understand the beauty and the power that is in a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. We get to understand the, the value of grace the power of mercy and the power of love when you look at genesis chapter 3 when man fell you know and it's something that shows us such a deep awesome amazing love of our father the agape love of a father now let's go right into it and let's unwrap genesis chapter 3 now when we look at genesis chapter 3 we see here the temptation of man and the fall of man, as you already know in the chapters before, we can see God giving man um, instructions about a certain tree that they must not eat from. And in chapter 3, uh, fast forward, we can see the temptation. Now, please allow me, I am going to read the whole chapter 3 because that is what we are learning about today. So from verse 1, now the serpent was more cunning than any other beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2. And the woman said to the servant, to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. I don't even know why the woman is explaining to the serpent. But anyway, let's go on on verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse 4, then the serpent said to the woman, you will surely not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit 
and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Verse 13, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly shall you go and you shall eat dust all the days of your lives. And verse uh, 15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. You shall bruise her head. You, um, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise a hill. Now, when we look at this, we are still going on to verse 16. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and you shall, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree, which I commanded you saying, you shall not eat of it. Cast is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your lives. Both thorns and thirtles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. Verse 19. And in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are. And to dust you you shall return. And Adam called his uh, wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunnels of skin and closed them. I just want to pause there. Out of all this that is happening, the Lord is clothing both of them. Verse 22, and the Lord said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know God, good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and also take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground, to till the ground from which he was taken. And verse 24, and he drove out the man. He placed a Chibrian at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Now, when we look at this, we are going to break down this whole chapter so that we can look at some of the things. Now, believe me, we, we can't, like literally, we cannot break down everything. So I would like to advise you as a child of God, as a student of the word, can you go and read this chapter? Can you read the chapters that we have looked at today um, as Bible school? I mean, from the first session, the second session, and the third session. It is so amazing. You will see how much revelation you can get. The revelation I'm going to give you, the breakdown, the explanation I'm going to give you, believe me, it is not really enough. The Lord wants you to go and study and even have more revelation in what he wants to specifically show you regarding Genesis chapter 3. But I am going to break it down. And the first thing we are going to be looking at is the introduction of the serpent. 
the serpent, the cunning serpent that the Bible talks about, we can see him coming. We can see back up scriptures of Revelations chapter 12, verse 8, Revelations chapter 20, verse 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 3. I'm just going to read some. So when we look at Revelations chapter 12, verse 8, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. Let me just read also Corinthians because I really want to show something here. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, but I fear but I fear least somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness. So your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that we find in Christ Jesus. We can see here the serpent did exactly what he did to Jesus. And this is what exactly the serpent did as we see in Genesis chapter 3, when you read John chapter 8 verse 44, you can see here, you are of your father the devil, and this is Jesus telling uh, the serpent Satan, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer and the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. No, these are the followers that were actually following the enemy. Sorry about that. You are of your father the devil the devil and the desires of your father you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it we can see the serpent did what jesus said satan does he did exactly the same thing that we saw in the beginning the serpent was found on the earth during that time and when we look at this we can see when exactly he was kicked out of heaven satan is related to be in between creation and tempting adam and eve the question is when this how did uh, the serpent or satan find or the devil find himself to be on the earth when you read job chapter 1 verse 6 to verse 7 said now there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and satan also came amongst them and the lord said to satan from where do you come so satan answered the lord and said from going to and fro on the earth from walking back and forth it it indicates that satan was able to move in between heaven and earth so it is so important to catch this kind of important uh, indications that the bible brings out satan was actually able to move in between heaven and earth and we can see here god is asking him where he was coming from when exactly was satan actually also kicked out of heaven satan is stipulated to be in between creation and tempting adam and eve as we see in chapter 3 of genesis now when we look at revelations chapter 12 verse 4 please allow me i'm going to bring you a lot of scriptures because for me i really believe these are one of the chapters that are really really not well explained and fully not well understood so many people have others have simplified them brought their own stuff taught different things even books have been written about genesis chapter 3 and i've seen that some books that are writing about genesis chapter 3 are actually misrepresenting or misinterpreting genesis chapter 3 so please allow me i'm going to be trying to bring out a bit of evidence from the other books of the bible when we read uh revelations chapter 12 uh chapter 4 it says his tail grew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born Satan took on the body of the snake 
And this is something that we can see here. The Bible talks about the cunning. And what is so amazing is to go back and read that the Bible says the snake was the most cunning of all. We can see here Satan either has used the personality of cunning in the snake, if you want to call it the personality, but he used that character of a cunning of a snake and took on the body of the snake to tempt Adam and Eve, of course Eve, and then later Adam was able to eat. Now, some scholars have tried to explain this figuratively, but I would like to say we don't really have proof to why Satan actually chose the, the body or the figure of, uh, of a snake. But something that for me I catch out there is that the Bible starts by saying it was the cunning of all. And that can also be something that Satan can use. You know, when you have pride, Satan can use pride, you know, to enter in. When you have bitterness and anger, Satan can use that one area or one door to enter in. But I have taken notice that the Bible starts by saying that it was the snake was the cunning of all. Why did God allow Satan to use the snake? That is another thing the Bible doesn't give us a clear explanation on. Why was the snake the one chosen? The Bible doesn't explain that. Now let's go to the next part. The tree of knowledge of good and evil as we also see uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. The only tree Adam and Eve were not allowed to eat. Why was this the only tree that Adam and Eve were not allowed to eat because when they ate this tree, as it was told by God, they would die. Okay, how would they die? We can see back up scripture from Revel from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ, in our Lord Christ Jesus. We can see here they were going to die because they had sinned and they had disobeyed God and what God had actually told them. They had the ability of choice, which was the free will that God had given them. By eating from the tree, they became aware of sin through disobedience. And we can see James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him... It is a sin. And through disobedience, we can see sin coming in. Because remember, they were aware because God had already told them. And they chose by free will to actually eat of this tree. And the only way to be free of sin is only, and God gave us a second a second way through, a way through. God redeemed us. Like God saw that you and I needed redemption. And the only way we have been given, that is the only way, not any other way, is faith through Jesus Christ. You know, we have backup scriptures in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to verse 10. That if you confess that with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The only way in which we can be saved, in which we can be redeemed, is only through Jesus Christ. When the sin came in through Adam and Eve, the only way that God gave us, not any other way. And I'm saying this as I'm here, not Allah, not anyone. The only way we have been given is only through Jesus Christ. Not through the saints, <laughs> not through any saints. We have just been given according to the word of God, his son, Jesus Christ. When we have faith in him, is the only way in which we can be saved again from this disobedience, from the sin and from the fall of man that we see in Genesis chapter 3. The number 3 we can see here, the deception of Eve as well as that of Adam and that is in verse 13. 
Now, something that you can watch out and see that is so, <laughs> I was reading, you know, every time I've read this chapter, even now, I think you had me highlight. <laughs> I don't know why Eve is, is, is having a conversation with the snake and trying to explain to the snake the instructions that God has given her. Because the instructions were not given to the snake. They were not given to anyone else. These instructions were given to Adam and to Eve. Now, Eve is trying to explain <laughs> these instructions to the snake. And what, of course, we know behind it, the enemy or the devil is in there. But I know so many times we fall into traps because we have to explain things to people who actually God has not given these instructions. So many times we sit there and explain things to, to so many people. Maybe they are not been they have not been sent by the enemy. But let me tell you, child of God, they will not understand what you are talking about. If you have been given an instruction by God, not everyone will get to understand it. I don't understand how Eve is seated there trying to explain the instructions that God has given her to God. You know, to 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 uh, the devil, and that is the uh, the the serpent, and it is so shocking <laughs> that she's going in such detail, and that is how we can get sidetracked, and that is how we can, you know, we can forget, and someone can twist our mind, someone can tell you no way, you are mad. Did God really say that? Did you really feel it in your spirit? Are you sure that God said it? Because so many times when God speaks to you, he doesn't speak to everyone. He doesn't tell everyone. There are some specific instructions that God will give you specifically as a child of God to obey. And let me tell you something. You can go explain it to a pastor, explain it to a leader. So many times I've done it. When God has given me um, an instruction and I, I, I don't know why, but sometimes I felt to explain it, to explain it so that someone maybe can validate what God has told me. And so many times when I explain it, I get to a place of really? Did God tell me this? Because this sounds crazy, you know. And in the end, I find myself disobeying the voice of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you what, several times it has come with consequences. Disobeying the voice of God, several times it has come with consequences. You know, and I had to go back and ask the Lord, please forgive me because I'm trying to get validation from someone else who wasn't there when God was actually giving me these instructions or the Holy Spirit was giving me these instructions. Oh, these instructions don't actually concern them, but I am there trying to explain something that is personally been given to me to carry out and to obey. Now, when you look at Eve here, it blows your mind. Eve is trying to explain to the serpent so much detail of what God has actually told her. So, and the question is, the first thing that Satan or the serpent asks Eve, as God said, now some Bibles you can hear when you read them, they actually say, as God really said. And we can see here, Satan always attacks the word of God by trying to undermine it and trying to cast doubt. He tries to cast doubt upon us as children of God. And this is what Satan is doing. And we know that even when Jesus was in the wilderness, it is the same thing that Satan was trying to do, casting doubt, you know. But Jesus was well, well informed about the tricks of the enemy. We can see here that Satan is casting doubt. And you know what? He's undermining the powerful word and instruction that God has given um, Eve and Adam. He will also directly challenge God's word. Directly. He doesn't. Satan is not afraid to directly challenge God. God words, God's word, or even to send someone to directly challenge the word of God that God has actually spoken or specifically scriptures. He is not afraid to directly challenge you when it comes to the word of God. That is why it is so important, child of God, that you know what? You learn the word of God. You study the word of God. You have this truth in your mind, on your mouth, because the enemy is not afraid to challenge us when it comes to the word of God. 
And if we are not well informed and we are not well studied in the word of God and the word of God is not in us to guard us, let me tell you something, you might fall off. And the enemy can bring anyone, can bring a false prophet, can bring anyone to challenge. Don't always think the enemy is going to bring someone who is of the world, who is a non-believer. The enemy can even bring someone who looks like a believer. And that person, let me tell you something, can challenge the word of God, scripture, challenge it a hundred percent. Now you child of God, you have to ground yourself fully in the truth. You have to study your Bible. You have to learn your Bible. And I'm saying again, you have to know the word of God and thank God that is what you are doing right now. So we can see in verse four and verse five, he is directly challenging the word of God so he can bring doubt Verse 6, the act of disobedience, we can see the act of disobedience and rebellion against the word of God. We can see disobedience actually now actually happening, not just casting doubt, but we can see Eve now disobeying the word of God. We can see here that there is something that Eve, if you read the scriptures, you can see here that Eve looked again at the, the fruit and saw that it was pleasant and it was desirable. So it appeals to the last of the flesh. First John chapter 2 verse 16. Now when the enemy was able to undermine the word of God and when the enemy was able to cast doubt to Eve, you can see here that Eve actually looks again at this fruit and now it looks, now, now it looks pleasant and it looks desirable. But this same fruit has been in her prosperity. It has been around her. But this particular time when the enemy, you know, undermines the word of God and, and casts doubt. Eve is looking at it now with a different eye and he is using the eyes of lust of the flesh. After that, the next thing, which we all know, she eats the fruit. She ate of it and she didn't end there. She offered it to Adam that was Adam who was with her. Now remember, even as as human beings, let me tell you something. This is something that I know we all know. Whenever you do something, you find yourself drawing others into what you are doing. Whether you are doing something wrong, you find yourself drawing others to do it. If you are doing something right, you find yourself drawing others to do it. Now we can see this picture here when it comes to Eve. Eve doesn't just eat and keep quiet. Eve doesn't just eat and say, you know what? Let me leave my husband alone. Eve draws Adam in and gives Adam to, to eat. We can see here when he offers it to Adam, Adam also eats. Okay? He, he forgets everything <laughs> that God told him. All of it is gone. He forgets everything. You know what uh, the serpent did? The serpent just used a door and used the door of Eve. And through Eve, the door was opened. And through that, we can see that this is moving. And I think this teaches us a lot of things. Now I'm saying Genesis, uh, sorry, I'm saying again, Genesis chapter 3 has so much revelation. So much revelation and I ask you to make time and read it and you will find so much revelation that literally relates to so many things around us. And when we see this, when Adam eats, immediately their eyes are opened. Now their eyes are not open to the beauty of God or to the love of God. Their eyes are open to the nakedness. To their nakedness now their eyes have been opened and it takes us back to the truth that God had told them in the beginning when Satan cast the doubt you know when I was younger and I know some of you have been there <laughs> I mean it is still going around like really it wasn't a fruit it wasn't really it was just you know and over and over I've seen people debating this chapter but when you read the following uh, verses one by one, you can see that everything adds up from the beginning. After they both eat, now 
they see that they are naked. They were naked in every sense. It is not just the outside, but they were naked even in the spiritual. They became naked. The covering of the glory of God on their life, the covering of the presence of God on their life, left them because of the disobedience, because of the entrance of sin in their life. And now it doesn't end there. Something that I love. I love the way God plays this out. I love our Father. I love the love of our Father. Our Father doesn't leave them and says, Oh, let them, you know, Whatever, they have chosen to eat the, uh, the fruit. But the father, still the loving father, confronts their sin. We can see the loving father telling them the consequences and, you know, giving them the consequences of what they have done. But you know what is so also amazing? We can see also the father is doing that and it's coming from a place of love, you know. It is coming from a place of love. Something that I, I know that you saw was that the father covered them. In the end, he covered them. He did not leave them naked even after the consequences and laying down the consequences, you know, of, of, of what they have done and their disobedience. Still, the father covers them. He doesn't leave them. And what is also very amazing is that the father was still able to look for them. And was still calling out to Adam and looking for them. Are you telling me that the father was not aware of what they had done? He was aware of what they had done. But he is love. And he, that is what we call agape love. He was able to reach out to them. He did not say, you know what, you have listened to the serpent. Now, whatever comes, it is up to you and all that. But you know what, the father still calls out to them. And that is one thing that is so amazing about our father. However far we go and we draw away from him, he is always calling us back. We are, he's always, we always hear his voice just like he was calling Adam and, and calling them, where are you? You know, calling them again and saying, where are you, Adam? Where have you gone? Why have you gone away from my presence? Even though the father knew what they had done. The father still reached out to both of them in love. So when you look at this, it doesn't look like the father hated them and was laying down. Now you woman, this is what is going to happen. You can see it still being done in love. But the father is still showing them the consequences of their disobedience and the consequences of their sin. So we can see that and we can read more in that James chapter 5 verse 19 verse 20 now the next part is the seed in verse 15 an enmity between the seed of a woman and we can see this in a prophecy also prophecies we can see in matthew chapter 1 verse 22 to verse 23 and we can see in isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 therefore the lord himself will give you a sign behold the virgin shall con um, conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel and the seed of the serpent. We can see here that there is a seed now that has come. There's an enmity between the seed of a woman that God is already. And we can see in Isaiah, the Old Testament is already prophesying this seed that is going to come through Jesus Christ. We can see also the woman is going to be able to bring forth a seed but also the uh this the serpent is going to bruise the woman's heel bruise the serpent sorry let's go back the woman is going to be able to bruise the serpent's head and this is the seed that is going to come from this virgin woman jesus inflicted mortal wound on satan through the cross now when we look at this we can see that eventually in the new testament it happens that the woman gives birth forth to a seed that is still going to bruise the serpent and that is the enemy or the devil that in the beginning had brought about the fall of man romans chapter 16 and verse 20 and god of peace will crush satan under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ will be with you amen we can see there paul 
talking about this. Now, when lastly, we look at the consequences of what came after the fall of man. Number one, the curse upon the serpent. There was a curse upon the serpent and it is written there in verses 14 and 15, cursed more than all cattle and this serpent will not walk but will eat of the dust. This serpent will not walk and this serpent will only eat the dust. And that is a curse that has been passed on as a consequence of this uh, sin and fall of man. The seed of the woman will bruise his head, the head of the serpent. The second consequence that we can see here is the curse that comes upon the woman, verses 8, 16. Sorrow and pain will the woman be when they conceive. And we can see here the desire has been turned now. The woman's desire will be for her husband who will rule over her. So this is what happened when Eve listened to the serpent. The curse that falls over man. And in verses 17 to 19, we can see that this curse came because of the fall of Adam. So cursed is the ground because of Adam. They will have to work the ground to eat. They will have to be toil. They will be toil. No longer will the Lord just provide like before when it was before the fall of man. Before the fall of man, the Lord would just was there was provision. But now toil came in whereby man had to, to work the ground and work hard and toil hard to be able to bring forth food for the family to eat. Death came to the whole human race. And that we can see in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to verse 19. Through the fall of man, the consequence of the fall of man was death coming to the whole human race. The human race was not in the beginning originally supposed to actually die physically. And remember also spiritually. We can see here that God made a plan. There was redemption that God put for this curse. And there has always been redemption. We can see in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. How amazing and awesome is our God. That as this was happening. As all this happened. God had a plan. He already put a plan in place for you and me. That is our amazing, awesome God. I don't even know how to explain because I can't have words <laughs> to explain this kind of love. We put ourselves in this position, but God sent his only son to die for us so that we can be redeemed from this curse. And then he carried the curse. He carried this curse took over the curse so that you and I can be redeemed. So the story does not end badly, everyone. The story ends beautifully. Even though we can see Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man and everything happening, but the story ends beautifully because in the New Testament, we can see Jesus Christ coming and redeeming us from this curse. God clothes Adam and Eve. God sets a children to guard the garden. We can see that God already put things in place and that is our awesome, loving, merciful, gracious Father that we serve. Gracious Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you, O oh God, for your amazing, awesome love that you have for our lives, almighty Lord. Other, I want to take this time and just pray for anyone. Now, I, I, I just feel in my spirit, someone is watching. You are watching this and you feel that you have fallen so far away from God. Um, you have fallen away from your first love. But I want to say to you, because I feel it in my spirit, and I want to say to you, the Father is waiting. The Father is ready to receive you back. Run to the Father. He's ready. That nakedness that you feel, that loss that you feel, that anxiety that you are feeling right now, the way you feel like you have so fallen so far, and you are telling yourself, I am so far. You don't know how far I have gone. I 
away from God, I want to say to you, the loving Father is open his arms and is saying, come. Come, I will restore you. Come, I will clothe you. Come, I will give you peace. Come, I will redeem you. That is the loving Father that we have. Now, I know the person that I'm talking about. You are a Christian. Okay, you are a Christian, you are not a non-believer, but you feel condemned for so many things that you have found yourself entangled in currently. But I am saying to you, the Father is so forgiving. Just ask him to forgive you. Now, let me just shortly, just quickly pray for you. And I pray that as I lead you in this prayer, you will have the courage to understand that the Father desires to have a relationship back with you how it was in the beginning father i pray for father the person that you have revealed to me i pray that mighty king of glory they will find the courage to return back to you oh god father i pray that they will receive your amazing love they will see your love and they will receive the love that you have for them for lord you do not condemn them almighty father even though your spirit convicts them, your spirit doesn't condemn them. So, Father, I pray that they will find the courage of God to come back to you. Father, I pray that you, as they right now as they are listening to me, they will repent, they will turn around, and they will return to your presence, and they will run to your arms, mighty Father. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will hug that person, that you will cover them, that you will, Holy Spirit, remind them the love of of the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to say to all of us, that is how amazing and loving and gracious and awesome our Father is. You know, we fall, but you can get up and ask for forgiveness. He has given us the blood of Jesus. He has given us Jesus to redeem us, to set us free. Receive it and don't allow the enemy to condemn you. Have a blessed week, everyone. See you again on Monday.